So now I just want to talk a little bit about um, effect sends and the way that they're used, um, or the way that I use them with, with rhythms to create and maintain interest throughout the track without going um, too hell for leather with, uh, with overproducing as I, as I see things. So the way that I try to sustain interest um, when it comes to um, uh, programming is to use effects returns. So um, it's quite an important part of the way that um, the way that I do things and the effects returns, what they give me is they give dynamics and they give some drive to loop. So if we just kind of go back to the beginning here and just listen to the first eight bars, There's actually a lot more movement going on within that sequence than um, kind of meets the eye. And, and the reason for that are these effects returns. Um, if we actually isolate those, it's going to mute all of these channels out and just isolate. Obviously, that's not going to work. So there we have something that um, it's an instance of um, lexicon reverb. And again, you know, you could use the generic reverbs that come with um, Ableton to do a similar job, particularly, you know, particularly if you're wanting to fly through something and you don't have access to the higher end plugins. Now, the thinking behind um, this particular instance, so um, effects return A, is another means of unifying some of these rhythmic components. When I chose the drum loops for this track, as I do with most of my revamps, I'm very careful to choose loops that um, that don't have a huge reverb presence in their own right. And the whole point of that is that if you take... A, a reverb effectively places your sound. Um, it gives you a point of reference. You know, it, it, for example... Um, uh, a plugin may say it's a cathedral reverb. Um, it says that for a reason. It effectively plants your feet in the middle of a cathedral. And, um, you know, if you have one component that lives in a cathedral, one that lives in a cave, and one that lives halfway up a mountain or whatever, you're going to have a very, very different um, frame of reference when you're listening back to the tune. So it kind of really makes sense for you to choose components that are relatively speaking reverb free and then it allows you to put your own reverbs back on and create that kind of unifying texture um, now with this particular instance um, this has been added if we look down at these main loops for a second and the clap you can see this is effects return one, and there are varying degrees of of this particular instance of the lexicon being added. There you can hear it with. And now without the reverb. So without the reverb, it, the whole sequence becomes quite dry. Um, it's still fairly unified because of the trouble that's gone into the EQing and the stereo field. Um, but I think with the reverbs in place, um, we just create something that, that sounds like it comes from one, one loop, one drummer, if you like. Um, a lot of that's down to this room reverb. Now, the interest is created by a second reverb here, which I've used a, a lexicon general concert reverb on around about two and a half seconds. So it's quite a long tail to it. 
Um, now, this has been used uh, as a spot reverb. So um, in order to do that, we've just used some pretty basic um, automation. And as with any DJ piece, you know, we tend to work in four bar and eight bar loops, as I'm sure you know. Um, so the eighth bar and the fourth bar are, you know, points where you might expect some sort of deviation from that basic groove. Now, I've used the clap here, which responds to reverb really nicely. Um, just to create that kind of shimmering um, resonance within the beat. So, as you can see here, if we look at the uh, look at the clap loop, now on the on the second beat of the bar, there's been uh, you know a, a modest amount added. It's actually only minus twenty four um, dB going to the uh, effects return. On the fourth beat of the bar, on the fourth bar rather of the section, um, that final beat uh, has been given twice as much, and then on the final beat of the bar which is the kind of critical one where you move into the second you know the next phase of the track you can see the uh, Stanton's loop comes in after that I've used yet more now this is just a very simple pattern that repeats from start to finish of the track and what it does is it just it just introduces like a a, a kind of organic feel to the drums without putting in extra kicks and rolls and all that kind of nonsense that um that I think just happens too too often in 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 what should effectively be quite an organic groove. Um, so if we just listen to that eight bar phrase again, and you should be able to hear how those uh, reverbs just um, spice things up a little bit. So yeah, you know, there's a it's, to an extent, there's a kind of they're almost quite imperceptible, and when it certainly when it comes to the lexicon room reverb, um, that the the drums are all being sent to in a lesser or greater degree. Um, you know, I really like to um, I really like to contain um, the the effect to a point where. It's not that it's inaudible, but you really don't want it to be perceptible too much. You don't want it to be jumping out of the mix. It's about fixing your drums together and fixing them at a kind of, you know, a given a given place. So if I just play around with the uh, the variable level. Pretty much dry. We're going to set it around about there so that, um, you know, it just beds down into the track and, and doesn't really dominate things. 